good bit of rusticness in there, isn't there? That's the sheeting act. Okay, so uh, here we are looking at um, the finished cradle on top of our new coach roof, but um, taking a few steps backwards, I just need to explain how we've arrived at this point. So what we have down here is a, a layer of plastic, which um, we stapled over the, what I'll call our plug, which is the shape we wanted for the, uh, the coach roof to be. And we, we did that with some, a lot of timber down below there that you can't see. And um, then um, quarter inch plywood just sort of spread across those timber stations. And uh, we arrived at what we thought was a nice shape. You know, we stood on the bank over there and looked at it. We walked over there and looked at it and um, came up with the best sort of compromised shape for our new coach roof. So then, as I said, we put plastic over that and we then laid uh, nearly $2,000 worth of, um, this is one, this is, um, the Venice and Paul, um, Dance Steel of 80, which is quite, quite tough. Can't compress that at all. And, um, 14 by 8 for about $2,000, as I said. That got laid in, in sheets, 4 by 2 sheets, all the way across the expanse of the roof here. And then on top of that, we, we laid down two laminates of um, what we call a 1708. It's, it's a biaxial cloth, so it's a 45-45 weave. And it, this is used widely as a, a sort of general purpose laminating material. And so we did two layers of this cloth right across the whole expanse. And fortunately for us, the 50-inch wide pieces actually overlapped in the middle which means that right across the middle where the maximum stress is on this roof we'll have four layers, not two. And uh, this structure that's gone on top, which I'm calling our cradle, the, the next job is to attach this cradle to the roof with these little what we call tabs. And they'll just be going around, you know, on the outside, places like that, there, 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 there. About 50 of them all around the place. And then that will actually lock this cradle to the roof. And then this Sunday, what we'll be doing is we'll be manhandling the whole roof off, leaving the plastic behind. And um, then it will go sideways and out off from the boat. And then we'll flip it upside down um, to enable us to get these laminations on the underside. Um, because if we didn't do that, we'd be faced with um, putting up these large pieces of cloth upside down inside there, which would be no joke. So that, that is the plan for the final stage. Um, one, while we're right here, one um, consideration is the, um, 
where the tracks go for the, the Genoa. So from the bow up to here, this, this string is like right from where the jib hanks on on the bow, where the forestay is. And then from the center line, this, this um, line that I've drawn here is seven degrees from the center line of the boat. And it's on that line, that seven degree angle that the Genoa needs to be sheeted in when you're sailing close hauled. Now, foolishly, we, we didn't record where our original tracks were before we chopped off or threw away the old roof. It was pretty destroyed anyhow after Irma. But um, at least we know it's somewhere along this line. But it's important to note because those tracks that take the cars, the fair leads for the jib sheets, um, have to be reinforced both on the top side and underneath. And there are going to be timber um, stringers um, on the underside and the bolts from the track will go down through the top and then through those timber stringers. And we're going to be fitting those stringers while it's upside down and away from the boat. So we have to make that call on where our, our Genoa tracks are going to go. We've got some old photos that will give us a clue. Um, but there's going to be a whole network of timber underneath, which we'll see in future episodes because there'll be another stringer underneath where this reinforced section is. There'll be another one going right across the boat about here. Yeah. Another one right there. This is all underneath. And then, as I said, one for the Genoa tracks there. And then another minor one there. And another one, same story. The other side. So it's great progress. I mean, this is by far the, uh, the biggest part that we'll be building for the boat during this rebuild. Everything else is relatively minor. But yeah, this 14 by 8 is... Um, is a, a big part to make and quite expensive too you know just with um, the materials it will end up being about five thousand dollars so you know you um, you have to get it right otherwise you're you're wasting an awful lot of money but uh, it will be good to see this um, finished I mean when we take it off the boat it's gonna look like we've gone backwards um, some because there'll just be a big hole again here and people will wander by here going well what on earth are they up to um, but you know this has taken like a couple of months or more to get to this point um, but when it comes back to the boat it will be a finished piece and we'll just be grafting it in all around and um, basically um, she'll be a boat again. <laughs>